Hello everybody, welcome back to Read and Reread. I am Angelia and today it is time for Friday Reads on October 20th. We are in the home stretch of October. There are 11 more days. I'm distracted by a giant Coca-Cola truck that appeared in the alley behind my house. It's so tall, I can see the whole logo. They're putting in a new restaurant back there. So that's, I mean, instantly I turn on the camera and I'm distracted. Hello, how is everybody? Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you if you've recently subscribed. I noticed some people have joined in the party this week. So welcome, welcome, I'm glad you're here. Uh, so last week on Friday, I was waiting uh, Emma to get here. We had a nice weekend together. I did get a plant for the flower pot that she gave me that I showed on Tuesday. So here is a picture of the potted plant I took this picture outside, but it's an indoor plant, but I was potting it outside. It's called a purple waffle plant, and I have not had one of these before, but it looked really pretty in the sunlight because you could see the colors in the leaves, and when I take the picture indoors, it just kind of looks dark, but it, it will actually be sitting here in front of the living room window. So anyway, so we did that. Um, over the weekend, we went to the Veg Fest. I have my Veg Fest t-shirt. That's easier. VegFest t-shirt. It has stuff on the back too, but I'm not turning around right now. And uh, we went to the Rocky Horror Play, which was really fun, uh, especially since I was the only one who knew about the audience participation. And my daughter had seen the movie, but she saw it like with friends in the dorm or something. So she hadn't seen the participation and Stephen hadn't seen anything of any sort. So it was, it was very, it was very fun. Um, then let's see, the week has gone by, um, we don't, what are we watching? We're watching the baking show, there should be a new episode tonight, and then we flailed around a little bit and tried this and that, but last night, um, we found out that Bosch Legacy Season 2 was out, so we started watching that, because we have watched all the Bosch and Bosch Legacy Season 1, and so, anyway, we're, we're going to try that. We saw the first episode, it ended very suspensefully so we'll think good thoughts about that continuing to be fun and to watch and so now let us uh let us not tarry and move directly into the books of the week um so first of all uh i think i think i had already finished this had i finished this last week i can't remember or was i almost finished but anyway i did finish it i'm ahead of schedule um, this is the group read for Victober, and I am participating in the discussions in the Discord. So I don't want to say too much about it since I am ahead of schedule, but I really love my first uh, foray into Anthony Trollope. And this is a standalone book, although I hear that maybe one or two characters do appear in other books. So maybe there's a Trollope averse and Trollope verse, Trollope averse. I don't know. Anyway. So I, when I went into it, I thought, I don't know, I guess I was just thinking, will it be like a Dickens vibe? It's very different than that. But what you will find in this book that I can say without giving too much away is lots and lots of characters, but they are introduced gradually and in detail. So you don't really get confused or lost with the wide cast of characters. There's lots of marriage plots and you get a little bit of everything. The whole issues of marrying uh, for love versus for money, pressures from family to marry uh, certain people or not to marry certain people, uh, duplicitous people, unrequited love, all kinds of things. And, and, and at one point in this book, I wanted to just take everybody who was single and just re resort them, like just make a, you know, like a murder board out of them and, and make my own pairings. But Anyway, lots of things going on. Some of them ended the way I would like, some did not. That was part of the fun. Um, there's financial intrigue, some political intrigue, uh, just really memorable characters, both the good and the bad, all of it. Really fun, really fun reading. And it, and it went fast for a book of 700 or whatever pages. It, it breezed along pretty well for me. There is one character in here who is a 19th century dead ringer for Donald Trump. And I cannot even read you the the little descriptions and passages because so, a lot of them are 
past the official point that we're supposed to be at in the story, but if especially if you are a, an American reader, I think you will be struck again and again by the similarities between this character and his his uh, plot arc and the behavior of the people around him. It's just it's uncanny. But that was that was an awesome read. Uh, then the other book that I and well I finished a couple things, but this also I read this week was Tales of the City by Armistead Malpin, Malpin, and something that I didn't realize until I kind of got to the end and I looked up some things about this book and the series was that this was originally serialized in a San Francisco paper. And that makes a lot of sense because I it has this very breezy episodic structure, very short um, chapters that often end on a real pithy statement or um, kind of a mini cliffhanger. And I found it kind of jarring for a while how it was there was this very breezy style even when something serious was happening because a couple of times something pretty dark occurred but it was kind of like da 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 and I was I was kind of like hmm this is uh, kind of weird um a lot of it is actually funny but even the dark parts kind of are kind of played off a little bit lightly but as the further that I read I, it kind of grew on me and I got, I think it's because I, I began to become attached to some of the characters. Um, it's about a group of people who live in the same apartment building in San Francisco in the late seventies and all of their various, um, a lot of it's like their romantic exploits, um, looking for love or just looking for sex or looking for something. And then there's some work, uh, situations and some personal mysteries and secrets and some of those are revealed by the end and some of them are not because this goes on to be I think like nine book series or something like that but some of the characters really uh kind of settled in I wanted to know more about Anna Marianne Mouse otherwise his name is Michael but his nickname is Mouse and a couple of other people and even a couple of the sort of wicked people, I, I wanted to know more about, well, why are you like that? Are you, are, you know, are, and if it's going to be a nine part series, I assume there's going to be some kind of growth coming up and this is just the beginning. Um, so it was very fun. And this is also for a group read. So I'm not going to over, over speak because I think some other readers in the group are, have just started. But uh, I did enjoy it. And the weird thing is that I had read it before, no memory. It never, I kept thinking, oh, it's going to kind of click. I'll be like, oh, yeah. No, absolutely zero recall of ever having read this book before. But I did have fun reading it. And at first when I was reading, I thought, oh, I'll probably this is a one and done. You know, it's okay, but I'm not really that into it. By the time I got to the end, I was like, oh, I kind of want to read book two and see what happens. Um, but my library doesn't have book two. Like, they only have about four of them, and the next one is three. So, what? And I don't, I don't know. I don't want to buy it, really. This was a library book, so I, you know, I don't want to hopscotch it. Yeah, I, I don't. Reader problems. I don't know. But it was a fun book. Then we have. Then we get to a, a moment of disappointment. We must discuss a disappointment, and that is the little Claire Keegan story. Um, there's a couple of reasons why this is kind of disappointing and I kind of, I want to tell you the good and the bad. So first of all, I did buy it. Um, you know, it's on me. I knew it was short, but I kind of thought, I mean, I, I guess I could have read the details and seen exactly how short, but I didn't. I just went, ah, Claire Keegan. And, um, so I thought it was a novella. I was thinking, you know, foster small things like these. And it's like smaller thing like this. Um, it's a very, it's a short story. It's not a novella. It's a short story. The story itself is 47 pages. So it's kind of a longish sort, short story, but it is not a novella. I wish it was. There are a few things that could have been a little more filled out. Even knowing how spare Claire Keegan is and loving that about her writing, it was a little underwhelming. If it was a short story in a collection which is what it should be. I, I probably would think it was a pretty good story. I still wouldn't have been blown away. 
And also, it doesn't help that there is a story in um, Walk the Blue Fields that pretty much is the exact same um, topic, theme, and outcome of this story, except this one is in an urban setting, and in this story, it is in a rural setting. But it's it's the, the same ground has been trod upon. And... So basically we have a, it, it tells you right here on the little thing. It says, after an uneventful Friday at the Dublin office, Cathal faces into the long weekend, takes the bus home. There his mind agitates over a woman named Sabine with whom he could have spent his life had he acted differently. Okay, that's just what he does. He, he kind of ends his day at work. He goes home and he, he does some ordinary stuff at home and he thinks about this relationship that, that has not worked out. Now, um, it is very obvious, almost from the beginning, why the relationship did not work out. This is not the, the crux of the story, like, whoa, what went wrong? We can see very clearly what went wrong. What I don't understand is what went right. Why did this thing ever even get off the ground? Because it's not like something suddenly got revealed. It's very clear what the problem is here, and and why it turned out the way it did. And that's that's what I have a problem with. I wanted more, I, I all the stuff about what happened and how it ended, it is well written and it's good, but I need more about how, how it got to this point, like why the two people thought this would work or what this woman was thinking to begin with. I don't wanna give it away because you might read it, but um, it, there wasn't enough. So I was kind of bummed out. It is well written, but it is basically, I think it's kind of a money grab. Why, why this is bound as a hardback book and it is just a short story. That's it. Why, why could we not wait until she had a few more stories and put them together? Uh, it is a beautiful little book. I'll give it that. I am going to read it again because as a story, it's not a bad story. And I, and I think all of her stories and novellas um, merit close readings because there's a lot of uh, nuances in there that you can miss. So I will give it, an, you know, I, I like it enough to read it again, but I, as something to purchase it, what, why? Okay, one wasn't that thrilled, but it's on me because I, I knew what it was and I bought it and oh well. It's, it's cute, please, it's cute. That brings me to what I am currently reading, which is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is a reread. I received this nice little penguin cloth bound book from my dear family um, a couple years ago, two, three years ago. Um, I can't remember, birthday, Christmas, I don't know. They gave this to me and I read it right then and I really loved it and I wanted to reread it again this year for Victober. I think a lot of other people have been reading it as well. I've seen it in some people's videos and it's just, this is a, one of those uh, quieter paced books. It, you know, coming after the way we live now where there's lots of going on and intrigue and does he know about that and she's gonna get that letter and all this kind of stuff. Um, this one is kind of a slower pace. This is about a town, and it's also very different from Gaskell's other books, but it's about a town of women. And let's just set that down. It's about a town of women. The narrator explains early on, and who the narrator is someone who visits, she comes in and out, and she visits and she stays with these two older sisters when she's there. The town is full of women because, as she explains, if there is a husband uh, in the picture, he's usually... Uh, away on business a lot in the neighboring town or maybe he is a ship um, captain or he's away with his regiment and it just kind of boils down to most of the full-time inhabitants of the village are women. Now what's funny in this story is um, have you ever known somebody, maybe you know them now, maybe someone in your family or somebody at work who uh, this person thinks that they are kind of low maintenance and simple and easy to please, but they're not. They're they're like super high maintenance, but they think that they're really chill. The, this whole town is kind of like that. They talk about, oh, you know, we don't care about keeping up with the latest fashion. You will see us in our 
clothes from a few years ago and they're neat and mended and we just we just aren't concerned about all of that drama that men get into and da 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 and these ladies are all up in their own dramas and they are they are they are really into what people were wearing even though it's not the latest style they are rather preoccupied with people's hats and caps they have all of these rules about when you know the visiting hours are 12 to 3 and you should only stay for 15 minutes and when you do this and when you do that and so they are actually um even though they are good-hearted people they actually are not nearly as uh laid back and simple as they profess to be and that's part of the humor is them being flustered by small variations in behavior other than what they would expect and there are um just quieter type dramas about lost loves about um financial problems they don't like to talk about money and finances but it's always in the background because many of the women are single or widowed and there are um there's money problems so there in that in that regard it would fit in with some of the um the themes about class that are being discussed in uh the victober topics if you're going to read cranford you you have to be ready to gear down there's a whole part uh dedicated a, a long paragraph dedicated to the purchase of a new carpet and the entertainment that they got out of the carpet L let's listen to this my next visit to Cranford was in the summer. There had been neither births, deaths, nor marriages since I was there last. Everybody lived in the same house and wore pretty nearly the same well-preserved old-fashioned clothes. The greatest event was that the Miss Jenkinsons had purchased a new carpet for the drawing room. Oh, the busy work Miss Maddie and I had in chasing the sunbeams as they fell in an afternoon, right down on this carpet through the blindless window. We spread newspapers over the places and sat down to our book or our work and lo, in the quarter of an hour, the sun had moved and was blazing away on a fresh spot. And down we went again on our knees to alter the positions of the newspapers. We were very busy too, one whole morning before Miss Jenkins gave her party in following her directions and cutting out and stitching together pieces of newspaper so as to form little paths to every chair for the expected visitors, lest their shoes might dirty or defile the purity of the carpet. Do you make paper paths for every guest to walk upon in London? <laughs> so that just gives you an idea of the style and the nature of these ladies. But I am enjoying spending time with them once again. And I will have some more thoughts next week after I have finished reading the book but I do recommend Cranford when you're in that mood for that type of book and I'm going to watch the series after I'm finished based on the recommendation of many fine viewers so after Cranford I have some more contemporary things to choose from that uh, I, I'm gonna have to see when I get to the end of the book in a couple days how the mood feels but I'm really eager to read that book I got for my birthday Land of Milk and Honey by C. Pam Zhang that is a dystopian novel also two things came in at the library that I requested like six months ago they are notoriously slow to process books and I had forgotten these books I mean these are books that people were talking about months and months ago and the library was getting them I was like oh yes I put it and I just forgot about these because I have a lot of why am I I got lots of hands going on here I had lots of requests and things and stuff coming in and out but um wandering souls by cecile penn came in i know this one's supposed to be quite sad um but i am still interested in reading this and then remember this fad yellow face by rf kwong and everybody was reading this back in the late spring or early summer i missed all of that but now here it has materialized so um, I still think this might be fun to read as well. I'm not quite sure because I've heard at first people were excited and then I heard mixed reviews and I, w I was all keen to read it and then the mood kind of faded and then the book turned up. So maybe I'm kind of, I mean, to be honest, I'm more excited about my own book than these 
late breaking library books, but I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll read all of them. So that's it. What have you been doing? What's up for you this weekend? What are you reading? Like it's going to be hot. It's going to be like 93 today and tomorrow, I think. Yeah, but that's it. Uh, hope you have a great weekend. Let me know what's up and I'll be back on Tuesday. See you then. Bye.